Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this rose that measures 6 inches by 9 inches on this bit of rough fencing wood. Obviously I've sanded it down before and just to give it a nice smooth finish, just to make it a little bit easier for the router to run on. Now as always for me, we've got our template. I've actually used this one before. This was a, if you look on my previous videos, Rose with resin. So I've actually made a stained glass effect with this template. And I always say I prefer to carbon and draw because you can use a template over and over again. And this is the first time I've actually used the same template twice. But as always, we've popped it on our bit of wood. We've got the painter's tape. You can see from that already. And we will put carbon paper underneath there. Lay that flat and literally just draw around it all. It takes minutes. That way, you can obviously pull that off and like I've just said, you can use that over and over again. Same as your carbon paper. You get a lot of uses out of your carbon and it's really cheap stuff to purchase. And there we have it. That's our little template for today. Take your time to shade in the areas you want to remove. You think it'll be okay, but you'll go away, come back, and then you'll start routing out these lines. Well, that's it. That's the end of project. So shade in the areas you want to remove. And the idea is we're going to remove all the shaded area and you can see from that I've added a little line all the way around and when we've done the routed out area we'll literally get a scroll saw I'll be using a Pegasus spiral on this one but we'll talk about that nearer the time and we're literally just going to cut it out you could leave it on that piece of wood if you want to like that it's entirely up to you I just prefer to cut it out and call it scroll to work that's a mixture of scroll saw and router. Okay, as always for me, little CNC bits to go around all these lines. They do have a Dremel size shaft on, these are little CNC bits, they come in packs of 10s, different degrees, these are 10s and 15s, these are my favourites obviously because there's only a couple left in there to use, they're 20s and 30s. Now they all come with blue caps on, so it makes it a little bit awkward, in the good old days, they used to have red caps on, yellows and whites. Now everything's blue. So just make a note. 10, 15. That half of the packet will be your 10s. This half of your packet will be your 15s. And same with the other ones. And we'll just simply pop that into a collet. A 6.35mm collet. And your 3.175mm Dremel size shaft. That will fit straight into a Dremel, no problem. But as we're using a router, a quarter inch router... You will simply slot that in like so. That slots into your router and you're good to go. And we're literally going to find a depth that we're happy with. I normally have a piece of wood somewhere. There we go. Prepared as always. I have a piece of wood like that. And you can see there's no end of different depths on there. And you can just set your router to one that you think is going to suit the project that you're doing. There is proper depth gauges out there, you can buy cheap enough. Why when you can make your own, that's what I say. And we're going to go around all the line work, just to separate this side of the barrier from that side. Once we've done that, we'll pop on these end milling bits. Now this is my old packet. These are really cheap, they fit the same size collet. I've noticed now on my new packet I've just purchased, they have these coloured heads on now. And they stop on there, I believe. This is the first time I'm going to use these. These are all nice and new and nice and shiny. And I think I actually tried to pull that off. I thought, what's the point of that? And it's glued on there. And I've worked out the idea is that you just push that into your collet to its flush. You know that's in the right place to go. So we're going to try one of these today. Nice, shiny and new. And when you put these on, we'll set it to the same depth of the CNC bit and literally clear out or the larger areas. Some of these small areas I will just simply just remove with the CNC bit. Okay that's enough talking for me. Let's pop our CNC bit into the router with our collet like so and we will start routing this one out.
Okay, you can see from that we've gone around all our lines. We haven't lost anything out, nothing's popped off yet. We say yet with caution. Very powdery this one today. Some fence panels do vary, some cut really nice and I'll be quite happy to use them all day long. Some are very powdery and flaky, as so is this one. That doesn't matter to us, we'll sort that out. You notice I've removed one there with the CNC bit. That was all done with the CNC bit. So if you haven't got these end milling bits, just use your CNC bits. It'll take longer, but anyways. So we found one that fits, end milling bit. We're going to simply slot it into our adapter collet, remember? So we've took the CNC bit out. We'll get a lot more projects out of that one. And it's just a case of simply popping that one in, like so, up to that barrier. First time I've used these, these colour things on. So that's quite interesting. So we've slotted that in, we'll pop that into our router and we'll set it to a depth we know is right, which is going to be that one there. We've slotted that in there, set it to the same depth. Or remember, we had the piece on the scrap over here. And then we'll literally just start removing the inners of the petals and leaves. We'll do that next. Right, we've made it round in one piece. We haven't lost anything. Those end milling bits certainly do their job. The good thing about those is they cut the sides as well as the bottom at the same time. So it's, it's fairly smooth, it's not brilliant, but we'll sort that out with sanders and the Dremel. So the next stage for me is I'm actually gonna cut this one out. You could leave that on that board, that's entirely up to you, but I'm gonna cut it out so we get the full shape of the rose and the leaves itself. Just a couple of minutes on blades for anybody that's new to the scroll saw. You get three basic standard blades. There is fancy ones out there with fancy teeth that cut in both directions up and down. But it's three basic ones. If I can just show you on here are your pin blades. They're also called pin blades because they have a pin at both top and bottom. And that's literally so you can hook that onto your saw like so. With the blade pointing towards you and it wants to be smooth on the way down. That way, smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. Then you know you've got your blade in the right way. These come on your cheaper, more basic saws. They're okay if you're doing outside cuts and whatever. If you're doing inner cuts where you have to drill a small pilot hole, you want to use pinless blades. Same again, but obviously no pins. These are ideal if, like on this one, for instance, where I've drilled a pilot hole just there, these will slot in a lot easier in smaller areas. I mean, we have one out there to cut out and that's literally about the size of the drill piece. So that will slot in there nicely. Whereas with your pin blades, you're not going to get that to fit in there because the pins are in the way. So that's when you need onto your pinless blades. Personally myself, I'm using what they call spiral blades at the moment. These have the teeth that spiral literally the full length of the blade. The good thing about these, they do cut in any direction. I have to use these adapter clamps on my old trapper saw or your more fancier saws you just slot that in twist it and lock it in position. I can show you quickly on this bit of wood here with your straight blade your pin blade obviously with your teeth pointing forward you would cut along there and then you have to turn that wood cut along there turn the wood cut along turn the wood cut along and there's a lot of turning and twisting some decent chaps out there, they do fantastic work, they're not for me. 
Whereas with a spiral blade, you can literally just have that like so. That's in your saw, and you just feed your wood like that. Just basically just go all the way around. No twisting, no turning. These are ideal for larger projects where you haven't got enough room on your saw to turn the wood. But they do take some getting used to. Okay, let's set up this spiral blade on the scroll saw and we'll literally cut this one out plus the inner cuts one, two and three there. Right, we've gone all the way around with our Pegasus number no. 5 spiral blade. That cut out really nice, no problem whatsoever. Some people like them, some don't. And I can just show you quickly, I've not touched this apart from remove it to get the dust out and then put it back in its framework. And they've cut really smooth. No problem with them whatsoever. Some say they don't cut as good. I don't see what the issue is myself personally. You do get your little edging bits on there, and that will be a case of just getting a bit of sandpaper and away you go. Now some projects, you have a rough idea what you want, some projects just develop as they go along. Now on this one, we could leave it like that, unless we put our paint in, sand it down, bit of varnish and we're finished. But I'm just going to lower the leaves and the stem just a little bit, just so it's not flush with the flower. Just give that flower a little bit to stand out. Does it need it? That's a choice of a personal thing. So literally, I'm just going to lower this down, maybe the thickness of a Dremel piece, which obviously is three millimeter. Just give that flower a chance to stand out a bit more. And that's just a simple case of going around all these bottom leaves again, and the stems. Just made this a little bit deeper in here. And I've done those two there. I don't know if you can see from that, but you can see that's how deep that it is now. You can see the difference in height there, so deeper one, not so deep. So I'll have to go over all this again. I won't do it on camera. You've seen the line work, you've seen me clear it out. So I'll do all this and then I'll skim over the bottom section just to show the difference in height between the flower and the leaves. I'll do that quickly now and then we'll come back when we're ready to sand down. Right, I don't know if you can see from that, but you can see the effect we're going for. So remember, I've lowered the leaves the inside of the leaves and the stalk a couple of mil lower them down just give you that same thickness from there to there and i was and i just skimmed over with a mill end bit and it's not a lot it's just enough to know that the flower stands out slightly more than the leaves i've got one leaf left to do there so i'll just show you that last bit and you can just see that subtle difference between the two levels you could have gone down a bit more if you wanted to but i'm happy enough with that the good thing about having this around, remember, to our little project, we still have this nice service to run on with the router. So I'll just finish this last leaf off like so. We'll skim over that and then we'll start tidying this one up. Right, that's it. We've gone all the way around. 
done away with them bits now. They're, they're no longer needed. And that's basically the shape that we've got now. Like I said, it's just subtle. Just enough to say it's lowered it down a bit. And you might be thinking to yourself, was it worth the effort? Well, it works for me. Anyway, we'll general tidy up, bit of sanding down, bit of cleaning up, get these edges sorted, and then we'll throw a bit of paint on this one. Right, that's enough sanding down and clearing up for me. You can see from that, I've slightly just rounded these edges off on these, just to make it a bit smoother and not as, not as sharp edge. So we've gone all the way around that with sanding and Dremel bits. The Dremel bits I use are these just engraving bits. They're designed for glass and stuff, but you can use them on metal and they work fine on wood. Ideal just for getting into those little tight areas for your general tidying up. Like I say, we've rounded it off slightly, not too much. We've cleared the back. And that's it, we're ready for painting now. We can see our little rays there from the flower to the leaves. It's not drastic, it's just subtle enough so you can tell it's been done. Now paints for this one, as it's going outside, I'm just gonna use my painter's touch paints. I use these on a lot of my projects. They work great and you get a lovely little pot like that and a little bit goes a long way. So, a yellow rose today, funny enough. I've got enough red on my shed. So we're going to go for a nice bright yellow rose. Bit of green on the leaves. And I'll have to mix up my own brown for the actual little stem. Okay, I'll go and paint this and then we'll come back and give it a little sanding over just to make it a little bit more crispier. And then a bit of linseed oil just to finish it off. A bit of spray and we're heading towards the finishing line. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. You can see by that lovely shine, we gave it three or four coats of our crystal clear. Just give it a bit of protection and make it nice and shiny to go outside. Remember, it's just cheap, nasty, scrap fencing wood is this. So you're not going to win any awards with it. But the nice little starter projects for maybe that somebody's just starting out with the router or the scroll saw, and they don't want to go out and waste proper wood, as I'm going to call it. So there we have it. One yellow rose, six inches by nine inches on scrap fencing wood, router come scroll saw project. Thank you very much for watching.